Think of these cubes as data tables. They have the same shape, however, different colors. And we can place them right on top of each other. And that's basically a bending. Now over here, we also have cylinders, different shape, but we can match it with the cubes on the basis of the color. And that's merging. Now let's see how it's done in Power BI. When you combine data in Power BI, you basically have two options. You can either append data or merge data. Now let's first explain what the difference is between the two and then go over all of the things that you might run into while using them. Just imagine the following situation where we have salary data for different employees and then we break down this data into separate tabs inside of Excel and one tab for each department. So here we have one for finance, one for marketing and one for HR. And we're gonna connect two of these tabs inside of Power BI. Now here we are in the Power Query Editor and we have the HR table, the finance table and the marketing table. And I would like to combine all three of them into one table. Now you see that they have the same columns. And so here we have HR, here we have finance, here we have marketing. And if you want to combine data like this, that has a similar structure, then you do that using appending. Okay, so you can simply go to the home tab, then here almost all the way on the right, we have merge queries and append queries. Now we are gonna use append queries. So that basically means you take one data set, put the other data set underneath it, and then the third data set underneath that one. Okay, so here there's a drop down, so we can say append queries or append queries as new. Now, which one to choose? Append queries as new just basically means you leave the other three intact as they are, and you're gonna create a new one that combines all three of them. If you would just click on append queries, then we're gonna append the other data sets to the one that's currently selected. Now, here you have the choice to choose either two tables or three or more tables. Now, here, I basically always switch to three or more tables, even if I just append two tables, but because the interface is just a little bit nicer. And here on the left hand side, you see all of the tables that you can choose from. Here on the right hand side, you see the ones that you're gonna append. So if we want to add here finance, then I just select finance on the left hand side and add it to the right hand side. And then the same for marketing and HR. And once all three of them are here on the right hand side, and you can also change the order simply by using the arrow keys. Okay, so once you have all three of them there, simply click on OK. And now a new query pops up here, band one, which we can rename, of course. So let's call this one employee data. Now, if you have band queries, then also always double check if it actually worked by counting the number of rows and to see if it corresponds to with what you're expecting. Now here it's kind of easy, huh? so we have nine rows. Uh, so it works. However, if you are working with larger data sets, you have to go here to transform, count the rows, and then it will tell you how many rows you have. And then you have to double check if that corresponds to what it should be. Now, then you can delete that step and then continue. All right, so this is what appending does. So now let's also have a look then at what merging does. Now here we have another data set where we are showing the bonus amounts for the different employees for Q1 2020. Now let's have a look inside of Power BI. Now here we have the same table inside of Power BI. And what we're gonna do is we wanna take that data and match it with the other data that we just appended. Okay, so we have over here the bonus table and then here we have the employee table. And you might notice that they are having a different structure. Okay, so here I have department position name salary and here I have name period bonus. Okay, so what we want to do here is not put these data sets underneath each other, but we want to match the data. Let's do this. I'm going to go over here to the home tab. Then above append queries, we have merge queries. And also here we can either choose merge queries or merge queries as new. So let's go for merge queries as new as we want to leave the initial queries as they are. So. Let's click on it. And here we have at the top, the first table. So here you can either choose the bonus table or we choose the employee table, okay? And 
over here let's then choose the other one so that's bonus in my case and then there is also the join kind which plays a role when there's not a perfect match between the two tables that we are merging okay let's get back to this later because here we actually do have a perfect match and you see already here at the bottom that the selection matches nine of nine rows from the first table and now at this point you're not done yet you see here on the left hand side we have merge one and here we have everything from the first data set that was at the top so that is our employee table and then we have this one extra column the bonus column which contains basically nested tables now when you click on the empty space right next to table then here at the bottom it gives you the matched rows from the other table the bonus table in our case okay and then we still have to say which ones do we actually want to bring over which ones do we want to join okay so that we can do by going here to the expand button okay so here in the header of the bonus column let's click on it now here you can then say which fields you want to bring over so all of them and here also if you want to use a prefix or not now let's leave everything standard let's click on okay and you see that it brings over all of the columns from the other data set and also has this prefix which probably you don't want to have in this case so let's go back click on the gear icon and then get rid of this bonus prefix and you see that we have also over here the name which we already have in the employee data set so it doesn't make sense to bring that one over let's click on okay and there you go we have now your period and the bonus matched from the bonus table okay so what we have over here is now basically a totally flat table that contains all of the information from all of the data sets first by appending it and then merging the data from the bonus information so now that you're familiar with the two concepts of appending and merging let's go over some of the details all right let's start off with appending now, usually when you use appending, you do not want to load the individual tables that you combined, but only the combined result itself. Now to disable the load to the data model, you just go over here to your queries, finance in our case, disable the load, and you do the same for marketing and the same for HR. Okay, so now these tables will not be loaded, okay? You can also see that because they are cursive, okay? And then usually I would take all three of them, right click, move to a new group, and for example, call this one input employee table. Now, another question that you might have is if the data sets need to be structured exactly in the same way. And this is not the case. Now, let me show you what happens when they are not okay so i'm going to go over here to my hr input table and let's say that the order of the columns is different okay so maybe here we have the name totally at the beginning now that i have changed the order of the columns let's go to the employee table and you see it's still exactly the same we have nine rows four columns now the order of these columns is determined by the first table that you use for appending okay so if you go to the source tab and then here you see the finance table is at the top. So that means it takes over here the finance table, this order as the order for the final table that we have over here, okay? So if I put name here also at the beginning and go back, then we have name here also as the first. Now what happens if you have columns that are not inside of the other input tables that you're appending? Well, let's have a look. So I'm gonna take the name column, let's rename this to full name, okay? Then I go back to the employee table and you see that we now have nouns because the full name column doesn't show up in the other input tables and therefore creates a new one, fills the rest up with nulls. And over here we have the name column where we now have nulls because in the HR table we now don't have anymore the name column. Another topic that might be on your mind is what happens if you have same columns that you are appending, but the data types are different. Okay, so let's take the HR table again as an example. Go to the salary column. I'm gonna change from whole number into text, okay? 
Now, then I switch here to the employee table and you see now we don't have all numbers anymore, but we have undefined our ABC123. And so here we basically have the whole numbers and then we switched to text for the HR department. Okay, so it doesn't assign a data type and therefore we have to assign a data type here in the append query. Another thing that might happen is that some crucial information is actually missing from the data set. So here, for example, we broke it down by different departments. And what if there is no department column and then you combine the data? Well, here you see that we have a combined data set, but without the department. And now you don't know which employee belongs to which department. Okay, now let's go to the HR input sheet. Okay, so you see we only have now name, position, salary. And what you need to do in this situation is that you add another column that returns the department name, which you can simply do by going here to add column, custom column, and then call this one department. And it's important that when you do it for the other queries that you don't make a typo because then it doesn't match the different columns. Okay, and here we can then use quotation marks and in between these quotation marks, we're gonna put HR and then we're gonna do the same for finance and marketing. So now that we have added the different department columns and we go back to the employee table and now here in the combined data set, we have now the department column and we can see which employee belongs to which department. Now what to do if you have data sets that have a similar structure and you want to append them, However, the data sets are split over multiple files that are being dropped in a folder somewhere. For example, maybe you have the new actual data coming in for every month, or in our case, we're gonna have bonus information that is being dropped into a folder every quarter. And we want to append that with the previous quarters. Okay, so at the future data sets, they are not there yet. So we cannot just connect to the next quarter data set. Now what you do in these situations is that you can connect to a folder and then append all of these files that are inside of that folder. Now let's have a look how this is done. You can go here to get data and then choose the folder connector and then just browse to the folder. Now here we have our data sets which are stored in the folder called bonus. I'm just gonna copy the file path from here, control C, control V. Now here it's very tempting to click on the combine button, so combine and transform data. And actually it would work in this case because the data sets are exactly the same and we only have the files in this folder that we want to combine. However, if there are different files in the same folder, then you might have a problem. And therefore I always go not here to combine and transform data, however to transform data and this gives you an overview of all the different files that are inside of this folder and which you can combine so here you see we have four files one for each quarter in the year 2020 and to combine them you can simply go here to the content column and then there's a combine files button let's click on it so here you have to choose the sample file which can be any file in the folder but by default is the first one that it finds and it takes that structure of this first file and it looks for the same structure in the other ones okay so it's not as flexible as what we have seen before when we use the normal append feature okay so here i'm connecting to that excel file then i'm going to connect here either to the table or to the sheet and it's important that that name of the table or the name of the sheet is also in the other ones and so here i'm going to connect let's say to sheet one then sheet one also needs to be in the other Excel files. Now the preview looks fine. Then also here you can say skip files with errors. Now, if you have this one checked, then even if it finds, let's say, a data set that has totally a different structure and may, might fail, then it still continues for the other files that are in the same folder, okay? Now, if you don't have this one checked, it just stops. Okay, so usually I would actually have this one selected. Now let's click on okay. And just like magic, we have now the combined data set. You see, we have Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. Now, this first column over here with the source name might not show up for you. In case if it doesn't, just go here to remove the other column step, click on the gear icon, and then here you can bring it back, okay? Now, let me go to the last step again. 
Now you see here on the left hand side, we have one new folder. Now this folder contains basically all the stuff that is necessary to do the appending, all right? So you have a parameter sample file, a transform file. You can just ignore it. Now, if you go back to the query, now also here on the right hand side, we have new steps that were added that basically led Power BI to this end result, all right? Now, also here, always double check if the appending actually worked. Now, for us, it's kind of easy to see now that we have 36 rows, and so it's just a small data set. Now, in reality, you need, would need to go to transform and then count the rows and see if this meets the expectations, okay? Now, then you can delete that step and continue. Now, I'm gonna go to one of my Excel files and let's say somebody would not have called this sheet one, but sheet two, okay? And I'm gonna save it, go back to Power BI, refresh the preview, and you see we now have Q1 data, Q3, Q4, but Q2 data is missing. However, the Q3 and Q4 data is still there, and that is because I said skip files with errors. If that would not have been the case, then it would have stopped with Q1, okay? So that's why I make sure that I select that checkbox. Now, what would you do if there are also other files in the same folder? Well, then you need to go back to the source tab. And in our example, I added over here a random file into the folder. Okay, so here it's called random file. And you also see it here inside of Power BI. Now, then we can just simply filter it out before we actually combine the files, all right? And that's also the reason why I always go to edit first before I combine. So I go here to the name column, and then I can put a text filter where I say contains, and let's insert a step because we know what we're doing here. So keep rows where the name contains, and let's say that we want to have only the files that contain the name bonus. Click on okay, and now the story continues just like before. All right, so you just filter out the files that you don't need. And this can also happen when you have maybe Word files, PowerPoint presentations, or CSV files in the same folder, then just put a filter here on the extension column. So also here, go to the dropdown, text filter equals, and now it would only combine Excel files that contain bonus in their name. And this way you make your solution a little bit more future-proof. Another thing that you might wonder about is what happens if you have subfolders? Well, basically it doesn't matter. It picks up everything in all of the subfolders. So if you want to have it nicely organized, let's say by year, 2018, 19, 20, then it goes through all of the subfolders and all of the files that are in the subfolders, you will also see over here. Now let's also concentrate now on merging data. Now before we had a perfect match between our employee data set and the bonus data set. However, in reality, it might be that some employees are only showing up in the employee table and not in the bonus table and the other way around. And then it matters which type of join you choose. So let's have a closer look at the different join types. Now here we have the same employee table as before. However, I took one person out from the finance department and here in the bonus table, I added two new people. And let's see how that influences the merge. So I'm gonna go here to merge queries as new. We're gonna have our employee table we're gonna match this one on the basis of the name with the bonus table, okay? Now before when we didn't change anything for the join kind, we had nine out of nine rows that were matched. However, in this case, we only have eight of nine rows that were matched. And now let's go over the different join kinds, okay? So starting with the left outer, which is the default, okay? Okay, which basically means you keep everything from the left table and match whatever you can match from the right table. Now here there is no left and right. However, the one that is on the top, that's the left table. And the one that's at the bottom, that's the right table. Okay, so let's see what this returns. I'm gonna click again here on expand. And you see everything was matched. However, we have nulls for this person over here. Marketing analyst Rico Janssen, which is only showing up inside of the employee table, but not inside of the bonus table. Okay, and that's why we have over here nodes. Now let's change left outer to right outer. You see here at the bottom, the selection matches now eight of 10 rows from the second table. So it takes the second table and tries to match everything that it can match from the employee table. So this means that 
two employees. They are showing up in the bonus table, but not in the employee table. So maybe our employee table is outdated. Okay, now let's click on OK to see what happens. Okay, so here you see we have nulls for Christina Hufler and we have over here nulls for Tony Smith. Okay, so these two employees, they don't show up over here in the employees table. Now let's now switch then to an inner join. Now that we switch to an inner join, you can see here that the selection matches eight of nine rows from the first table and eight of 10 rows from the second table. Okay, now let's click on okay and then expand it again. You see, we have no nulls anywhere. We only have the rows where there was a match. Okay, so that's why we only have eight rows in this case. Then let's switch to an outer join. Now you see that we have 11 rows, so more than the first table and more than the second table. And out of join keeps all of the information that there is. So that's why we have here nulls for Christina Huffler, nulls for Tony Smith, and then also nulls for Rico Janssen. And because they show up in one data set, but not the other, okay? So with a full out of join, you keep all of the information that is in both of the data sets. Now let's then also have a look at the last two, which are left anti and right anti. So when you do left anti and you click on OK, you see only the one that is not appearing in the second table. So that is Rico Janssen. Okay, now let's do that then also for the right anti. Okay, and here you see Christina Hoefle, Tony Smith, those two employees that are not showing up in the other table. Now, these are all of the different join types that you can find in Power BI. Now, you might also have noticed that there is the option to do a fuzzy match. Fuzzy match is something that you would use if there is no exact match, match between the two tables on the basis of the names. Okay, so the names might have been spelled a little bit differently, but you still wanna perform the match. That's where fuzzy match comes in. If you wanna know more, just click over here on the, on the link. Another thing that you might run into is that you need to have the unique identifier based on multiple columns. Okay, so in our example, that could be the first name combined with the last name. So here I split the first name and the last name column. Okay, so what you do then is you just click on the first name, hold the control key, click on the last name so that they get concatenated. And then you match it also over here on the first name and the last name in that order. Now let's go for an inner join and click on OK. Then expand the bonus column and you see we have now the first name, last name, period and the bonus column. So everything nicely got matched, not on the basis of just one column, but the combination of two columns. Combining data through merging and appending is one of these key tools in Power BI that you really need to know. If you have any specific questions about this topic, just let us know in the comment section below. And if you would like to see more content on Power BI, consider subscribing to our channel or give it a thumbs up. Thank you and see you in the next video.